Welcome back. In this video, I teach myself how to electro polish stainless steel after building a handrail. If you want to jump to the electro polishing part, it's at a, just after seven minutes in the video. Nearly every job on this project starts off with a drawing. Here's my 20 millimeter diameter 316 stainless steel handrail I intend to make, and I intend to bend up down at my friend's stainless steel and alloy business. And there's nothing like doing a rendering, bit of a rendering to see what it looks like in the drawing. So to put us at the moment, we've just got the circle on the end, we've got these two outer lines, we've got the center line, and to make up a handrail that'll look good in a 3D drawing, just go to sweep rail, one rail, select the rail, curve, select, select the cross section curve, enter, Double enter. OK. So that's what the rail looks like in 3D. I just have to move it on the 3D drawing into the correct position. I'll move it up. I'll move it across. Move it down. Right, so I'll turn on some lines here so I can make that end go to that line there, for example. So I'll just hit move. I think I can go to the, well, I'll go to this end of this kind of line here, go to the there, move 50 millimeters, 50. Theoretically, it should be close to being in the right place, except it's gone from 2D, 2D to 3D. So I have to rotate this now. So I'll go to the plan view, rotate, take it off ortho, otherwise, allow me to go 90 degrees. And I'll just, it's not critical, just do it by eyeball. It's actually not quite right because I put a bend in it, so but I don't want to spend too much time on it. It's just a bit of fun to see what it will look, it will look like. So I better go to the profile again. Looks about right. I actually ended up lowering this by 10 millimeters. Go to perspective. Go to render view. Turn off the lines. That's my stainless steel handrail there, except it's a bit high. I'll take it. Well, <laughs> that really does look like stainless steel. I'm going to lower it about 15 millimeters because it's sitting up above the surface there you can see. So go to this view, move, ortho, fifteen. Back to perspective. Here we go. That's kind of what it's going to look like. It's a whole lot I can turn on and off here, of course, to make it look better. And I'll just do that real quickly. After turning all those off and some layers off, I should probably turn the profile off. I can also check to see that Put it in the right position so it misses those lines it looks like that'll work very well there i was a little bit concerned that this line might run a bit close to it but that's pretty much how it's going to look and where it's going to end up it'll have feet on it of course and one upright in the middle here so let's build this 
and here's the parts for the um, handrail bases and the dodger base and some other little bits and pieces for making up the dodger later on. <coughs> Good to be working together again, brother. Yeah. Um, Loving it, mate. Oh, I'm the new guy. Hey. Wow. The yep. new guy with some guy. old smarts here. Are you coming to work here? Yeah. Oh, it's good stuff. Just for 10 minutes. You can finish this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over it. No thanks, mate. It's insane. I've done my time. Yeah. I don't know what you did no, wrong. You, you can do some more. I don't know what you did wrong, but... <laughs> yeah, no, I'm meant to be retired, but I'm just tired. Yeah, mate. <laughs> Oh well, I'll stop putting you under the yeah, please. spotlight. We're rolling. I've just tacked that end plate on this handrail and <clears throat> I've made it 50 millimeters or two inches clearance there and it looks a little bit high to me so I think I'm gonna take at least 10 millimeters off them that's 40 millimeters now and I think it looks a lot better So I was thinking last night, how am I going to polish these welds for these handrails? And I think my friend who has a business in that field, I think he still does electro polishing. I'm not sure. But I thought, well, how hard it can, can it be? Can I make my own setup? And apparently I can. And um, one of the things you need is a carbon fiber brush. So I've got that. I've got material for a carbon fiber brush. You roll it up, put it in a tube, crush it, and then you hold that in your welding torch or you screw it into your TIG torch, however you want to set it up. You do have to have an insulator over it. You don't want the copper touching the job. It's just the um, carbon fiber brush that you should be rubbing gently on the weld. And the other thing you need is phosphoric acid. And... Um, I went to Mitre 10 today and after going to two big places, Mitre 10 had it, Bunnings didn't and um, this has got phosphoric acid in it. It says 30 to 60 percent phosphoric acid. So it's going to be a bit of a trial, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Apparently you reverse the polarity um, on your TIG welder as well. You use the earth as for the brush and the positive terminal for the earth on it. Um, apparently you can use AC or DC but it looks like I'll have to turn the welding settings right down. Um, so let's make it up and see how it goes. I'm going to keep it a little bit flat, not a round, completely round brush. 
kind of make it probably easier to crash the tube onto it as well. Get the end a bit even. Seems to be in there firmly. I've still got the um, cross bits in the carbon fiber that stop it fraying. Probably have to release those. I'm going to use this electrode holder to hold the brush. So it's not very pretty, but I've um, just swaged a bit of a welding rod into the copper. I can rotate the brush however I like there. I'm ready to give it a go. I'll put some gloves on. One day ago, I wasn't even aware that you could do this, and I have done quite a bit of stainless steel work in my life. So it's going to be really interesting. Um, got a breeze flowing through the place, so it's plenty of ventilation. Everything I think is hooked up. Little bit of the phosphoric acid. Here we go, first time. Nothing so far. Maybe I need some more amperage. I'll play with some settings on the welder. I think this will make the difference. I'll put it, I put it on um, lift TIG instead of high frequency starts. No, not yet. I've got it on about 15 amps now. Started on 5. Now I'll have another check what's going on. I can't imagine why it's not working. Oh, well, can have another look at the settings. Try it on AC. Oh! <laughs> right, I might need to turn the power down a little bit. Let's back down to 5 amps on AC. Wow, kind of looks like it does in the videos. Might have to watch some more YouTubes tonight. I'm going to try and um, DC again. Yeah, you definitely need the frequent, high frequency to start it. It's kind of working. Somebody who's done this before is going to know exactly what I'm doing wrong. But I'm going to switch the polarity around see if that makes a difference. It's supposed to be removing the iron from the surface. So, and I've seen on some of them, whether it's when it's in a bath, you get iron on the plate that you put the earth on in the solution. So it does make sense that polarity is really important because the irons might be going onto my carbon brush here or remaining on the stainless steel, so I'm not sure. But I'll give this a little bit more of a go, see how we go. I think that's working better. So going by the color of the solution that's coming off it, kind of looks like there's iron in there, so I kind of think it's working. I'm just going to have to take more care with my welding, um, which is easier to say because I'm right on the edge of what my reading glasses will do close up. I'll have to buy a more powerful pair of glasses, I think. But I, I'm going to call it a day and um, do a little bit more research 
to make sure I've got the polarity right. I'm pretty sure I have. And then um, I'll get back to you tomorrow. That's the welder settings. I've got it down on 5 amps there. I've got it on DC. I've got it on high frequency TIG start. I've got the pulse on high, crater on zero. As a comparison, I'm going to compare this pickling paste, which I believe has hydrochloric acid in it. It's pretty toxic and mean stuff. You don't want to mess around with it. I'm going to compare it with the um, other method using the phosphoric acid and the carbon brush and the electricity, which is kind of a bit of a fun. But I, I've used a lot of this um, pickling paste in the past, and um, it's to be treated with a great deal of respect. So I'm going to put my mask on before I start using it. The pickling paste has been on here for about an hour and um, I'm going to start with water and Scotch-Brite, see if it gets rid of the um, stronger deposits there. Wow. I'm liking the electro polishing better already. You see, even though I scrub quite hard on the colored part there, it's just not happening. You can see I learned a lot in this video, thanks to other YouTubers. The next video may well be about what this yacht cost to build. See you next time.